Welcome to this technical brief on the CIS domestic reverse charge. My name is Dean Newton. I'm a VAT specialist and this is quite an important area coming in from the 1st of March. I just wanted to pick out a few points from this brand new system. Now from the 1st of March we do have a new domestic reverse charge on supplies within the building industry, so building and construction services and goods supplied with those services. Now I say new, this system has been around for a long, long time. Uh, it's covered things like mobile phones, computer chips, emission allowances, wholesale telecoms, wholesale electric. Um, but from the 1st of March, it's being applied uh, to services that will have a much wider impact uh, than the previous and missing trader uh, targets. Uh, and this is a missing trader target. They're trying to stop the subcontractors charging that uh, because over the past X number of years, there's been many subcontractors charging that, collecting that, and disappearing with the VAT. So the idea behind this is to stop uh, the subcontractors having the ability to charge that and pass on the VAT obligations uh, to the contractors they are billing. Now, these new rules, they will affect standard and reduced rated supplies. That's 20% supplies and 5% supplies. Now, that is on the proviso that the payments are reported through the construction industry scheme uh, for direct tax purposes. It doesn't matter what type of contractor you are, whether you're a gross contractor, a 20% contractor, a 30% contractor. If the supply is reportable through the CIS, then you have met one of the two key conditions. The second condition is the supply must be between registered parties. Uh, so a VAT registered subcontractor, for example, billing a VAT registered main contractor. There are a few exceptions, most important being end users, and I will look at those um, shortly. Now, because one of the key conditions is VAT registered or VAT registered, there is an obligation on the subcontractor to check the main contractor's VAT number. Now, HMRC have a new service for this. If you search HMRC VAT number checker, uh, you'll get directed to a web HMRC website uh, where you just put in your customer's VAT number, you put in your own VAT number, and that's just so you can get a, like a reference for your check, and then they'll tell you who the VAT number belongs to. And you would assume it's going to come up with your main contractor. Uh, so that would be what you need to do as a subcontractor. Check the main contractor's VAT number or the person you're billing, uh, their VAT number on the new HMRC system. So let's have a look how this works. Now I use a home extension. Uh, so what I've got here is a homeowner have an extension done and they've gone to one builder, uh, the VAT registered main contractor, and the VAT registered main contractor uh, subcontracts some of the work. Now, the DRC, the domestic reverse charge, is applicable in between the VAT registered subby and the VAT registered main contractor. So that's where the domestic reverse charge applies. Now, all this means is that the subcontractor is not allowed to charge VAT on that invoice. It's not optional. This is mandatory. You met the two conditions, CIS reportable, which it is, and VAT registered to VAT registered which it is. The DRC, the metric first charge, is mandatory. So out the invoice goes uh, with just the net showing. Uh, so and that goes in box six of the VAT return. Now the VAT register main contractor has the obligation to sort out the reverse charge. Now the reverse charge is just putting the correct rate of VAT in box one and the net in box seven. So that's the reverse charge. If we then look at what the VAT register main contractor is supplying to the homeowner, they are providing extension services, construction services, and that is taxable at the 20% rate, so standard rated. Now, because the main contractor is making an onward uh, taxable supply, they have the ability to recover in box four the VAT on the domestic reverse charge. So for the main contractor, it's just straight in and out. Now, the main contractor would then obviously deal with their sale to the homeowner. So that's box one uh, for the VAT or whatever they're charging the homeowner and box six for the sale. So that is the core provisions for the domestic reverse charge. It's not optional. If you meet the conditions, uh, then you have to do the domestic reverse charge. HMRC are intent on now allowing uh, the subcontractor to charge VAT. 
Uh, so therefore, that missing trade of VAT uh, that's happened for many, many years uh, just won't be there. Um, because the VAT risk and main contractor, uh, they put the VAT in box one and they recover it in box four, assuming they're fully taxable, uh, which most are. Now, how would this apply to tiered uh, contractors? Uh, so I've got more uh, like contractors down the line. Uh, so let's look at this and we'll deal with it one by one. So I've got a VAT registered subcontractor invoicing a VAT registered contractor. Now you've met the two conditions, CIS reportable and VAT registered to VAT registered. The DRC is mandatory. Uh, so the VAT registered subcontractor puts the net in box six and the VAT registered contractor uh, puts the domestic reverse charge in box one, that's the VAT, recovers it in box four and then puts the net in box seven. Um, so we deal with that reverse charge first. Now, the registered contractor is then invoicing that a VAT registered main contractor. Uh, so we then got to deal with that. Now, that meets the conditions. I've got CIS reportable and VAT registered or VAT registered. So I've got another domestic reverse charge uh, on a higher amount because obviously they've been marking up uh, what they buy in. Uh, so I've got the DRC on that invoice. So the registered contractor... Uh, puts the net of that invoice in their box six on their VAT return. The VAT registered main contractor sorts out the reverse charge in their books, so that's box one on their VAT return for the VAT, recovers it in box four, and then puts the net in box seven. They would then charge the homeowner for the extension, standard rated, box one, box four on their VAT return. Uh, so the provisions in principle are reasonably um, straightforward. Uh, but there are some compliance issues uh, that we just need to make sure. You know, what do we put on the invoice, for example? Now let's look at supply straddling uh, the 1st of March 2021. Now the tax point uh, will determine whether you charge VAT under the old rules or apply the domestic reverse charge. There is no apportioning of invoices around the 1st of March 21. It's either all old rules or all new rules. Now, the tax point in the building industry uh, tends to be under the continuous supplies of services, and that will be the earlier of invoice date uh, or payment. Uh, so that's generally going to be invoice date. If it's just a one-off job, uh, then it's going to be when the, the basic tax points, when the service is performed, completed. Could be earlier if it's invoiced or paid. Uh, so you might have a, an earlier tax point if there's a, a deposit, for example, but that would only be on the deposit. Uh, so what you're looking at is basic tax point rules. Now, if you look at the an example on this, let's say I have got a contract which straddles uh, the 1st of March 21. So work is done before and after, uh, but it's not invoiced until, let's say, late March. Now, that is invoiced uh, in the new system. Therefore, the whole invoice is subject to the domestic reverse charge. You don't apportion it between old rules and new rules. This would be the same for things like self-billing, authenticated tax receipts, a lot of guidance set in there on the revenue uh, website on those. But essentially for those, uh, the tax point is normally going to be when entered into the, the records. Uh, and when you enter it into the records, if you're entering it in, say, March time, that's going to be new rules. If you're entering it in February, old rules. Uh, so who's got the risk uh, on this domestic reverse charge? That's important uh, that the DRC is applied correctly uh, to the invoice because if it isn't and a subcontractor charges that because that's what they've always done, then VAT has been improperly charged. Now, any main contractors or contractors recovering that uh, are not in a good position because they are recovering VAT that has not been properly charged. And now that is not allowed. Uh, so therefore, technically, you're recovering something that you shouldn't. Now, fair enough, HMRC have said in the early days of the domestic reverse charge, uh, we're going to introduce uh, like a soft landing period almost, where there's uh, no penalties if you're just doing the best you can. But I want to get it right. And if I'm the main contractor and I receive an invoice, which I know should be domestic reverse charge, but the subcontractor has added VAT to it in error, then I'm just going to send the invoice back and tell them, you need to issue me an invoice with the domestic reverse charge. I'm not paying that uh, where there's a chance I might not get it back. Uh, it is a subcontractor responsibility to apply the domestic reverse charge, but the risk of it not being applied correctly falls on the contractor. 
And so we they both have obligations, uh, but the risk is all about that main contractor. Don't pay VAT uh, when you think a supply should be subject to the domestic reverse charge. Now, thankfully, all the software providers are getting up to speed uh, with the domestic reverse charge, and the software deals with pretty much all the compliance. Uh, so software packages such as Xero, QuickBooks, Sage, for example, uh, they deal with all the accounting. Now, you have to, in Xero, for example, you have to enable uh, the new domestic reverse charge tax rates in the software. Now, in Xero, you just click in the accounting menu, Advanced, and that's where you do things like journals. But another tab within that accounting menu, that advanced menu, is tax rates. If you click on that, uh, then you get through to this uh, page which says, do you want the domestic reverse charge tax rates to apply in your software? And you just click it. Now, from that point, uh, the software recognises that you could be raising an invoice subject to the domestic reverse charge. So therefore, when you next raise a sales invoice as a subcontractor and you're putting in all the lines and you go to the, the VAT rates, normally see options come up as 20% or 5% with zero rated, for example. You'll see a new kid on the block. Uh, you'll see a domestic reverse charge of 20, and as, actually there's two, uh, or a domestic reverse charge of 5. So you still need to know what contracts are normally 20, like commercial contracts, for example, and which contracts are 5%, let's say conversions, uh, because you have to apply the correct tax rate to the invoice. And what the software will do from that point is just take it from there. Uh, so they'll put all the right narrative on the invoice. They won't charge VAT on the invoice. Um, so just identify in the software as domestic reverse charge 20 or domestic reverse charge 5. The same options apply when entering a purchase invoice. I mean, less onerous when entering a purchase invoice because you haven't got to worry about all the right narrative on the invoice. You just look at the invoice coming in from your subcontractor. That should have all the right narrative on it. And then you just enter it into your purchase um, software. Uh, and uh, you make sure that when you enter it, when you're entering the VAT, uh, you put the right domestic reverse charge rate in there. And the software will take it from there. Uh, so for the subcontractor, for example, if I raise an invoice and I put domestic reverse charge 20, the software won't charge that on the invoice uh, and they'll put uh, the net in box 6 of the VAT return. If I'm entering it as a main contractor, uh, like a subcontractor's invoice, and I make sure I enter it as 20% domestic reverse charge, the software will put the VAT in box 1 and recover it in box 4, and they'll put the net in box 7. Now, if I'm the savvy raising that bill, if I just identify it when I raise the bill as a 20% domestic reverse charge, for example, then when you look at the invoice that the software generates, it has on there, for each line on the invoice, uh, the correct uh, narrative. And it should say, in zero, for example, it says domestic reverse charge of 20%, uh, and that's on a line-by-line -line basis. You could either show the amount of that or the rate of that. And the software I've seen always quotes the rate of that. It just says domestic reverse charge at 20%. It doesn't put the VAT in there because you're not charging VAT. It'll also produce automatically a required narrative on that invoice. And you see it on the bottom left on the Xero software on the invoice. And it says reverse charge applies to the items marked with the domestic reverse charge. Customers need to account for the VAT on those items uh, to HMRC at the rate shown. Now, they are mandatory provisions, which the software does automatically if you identify it as a domestic reverse charge supply when you're raising the invoice. If you're dealing with clients uh, that have a system which doesn't accommodate this, like, for example, they're still using spreadsheets, uh, then obviously all the emphasis is on them uh, to manually generate the invoice with the correct uh, wording on. But all the proper software, the good software, will do this automatically. Uh, right, let's look at cash flow. Uh, now, this is one of the big problems uh, with this new system. Many subcontractors rely on the output tax they charge for cash flow. And now this is a very much an integral part of their short-term funding. They charge it, collect it, and don't pay over to HMRC till, what, one, two, three months later. And that's a rolling situation. So their cash flow generally is boosted by the ability to charge VAT. Now, from the 1st of March 21, they'll not be charging that. So access to that funding will disappear. They will suffer a cash flow um, hit. Now, subcontractors need to make plans for dealing with that shortfall. And it's not just this that's going to uh, affect them uh, in 2021. 
Many of them would have deferred their VAT uh, from February, March or April of 2020 under the COVID um, deferral rules. And that will be coming back in instalments uh, through 2021. Some would have deferred their tax uh, that was due on the 31st of January 21, and they'll be paying that uh, by instalments through 2021. So subcontractors may be suffering quite a bit cash flow wise through 2021. And we just need to identify that, recognise that, and try and uh, give advice wherever possible to, to assist them with their cash flow. The main contractor uh, is completely the opposite. They benefit from these new rules because they don't physically pay out the VAT anymore. They literally put it on their VAT return, box one, box four. Uh, so therefore, the main contractors are, are actually uh, improving their cash flow uh, because of uh, these new rules coming in. Now, one of the things we could help the subcontractors with is doing monthly returns, because many subcontractors are likely to become repayment traders. Uh, so many would work exclusively on certain types of work, let's say commercial, they might be travelling to major cities, London, Manchester, Birmingham, for example, and working on large construction projects there. Now, they, their services will be domestic reverse charge. Uh, so therefore, they're, they're going to become repayment traders. There's going to be nothing in box one, uh, and they have the ability to recover their input tax in box four. They will become a refund uh, pay, uh, tax base, so repayment traders. Now, they could apply to move to monthly returns to improve their cash flow. Now, if I was saying this even, what, two, three years ago, that might have sounded a bit... Um, odd to say that because you know why would one do 12 VAT returns rather than say four in a year and uh, the work involved in that might be quite high but actually is it um, because uh, under these uh, under the new software uh, MTD software making tax digital software it should be okay now applications are accepted uh, from the start of the month of application so if you want to go to monthly returns if your client's got decent software uh, then uh, you can apply uh, in early March to go to monthly um, returns. Now, you'll have to finish off your old cycle, but you'll get notified what that cycle is via the MTD system. Uh, and uh, you finish off the old cycle, and then from that point, you're doing monthly returns, which, as I say, should be much easier if you're there using the likes of Zero, Sage, QuickBooks, etc. And because they're not these subcontractors, they're not overly complicated in terms of their, their VAT affairs. And if they're using bank feeds to push data into their software as well, then uh, the quarterly VAT return could easily take five minutes. Uh, you know, if they're decent records and quite simple affairs. Now, doing a pressing a button once a month or once a quarter, there shouldn't be a lot of difference there. And it's something that they should at least consider. They might say, actually, it's too much aggravation. My records aren't that great. Um, so stick with cordless. But for a lot of them that are using um, MTD-compatible software, then uh, this wouldn't be a, um, a bad thing to consider. It would certainly help them. Now, many small contractors may be using the flat rate scheme for accounting VAT. They would still be charging that at 20% under the old rules, 5% um, under the old rules. Um, but they account at their flat rate. Now, the domestic reverse charge supplies uh, from the 1st of March, they're excluded from their flat rate turnover, so they don't account for the flat rate uh, on their domestic reverse charge income. But if they stay in the flat rate, yeah, fair enough, their box one will be zero. But by staying in the flat rate, uh, they restrict recovery in box four on their VAT return. Because if you're flat rate, you can only recover on three things, really, which is capital goods over £2,000, VAT inclusive, uh, the bad debt relief, and pre-registration input tax. That's it. Uh, so what these traders should be doing is coming out of the flat rate from the 1st of March uh, 2021. Their box one will still be naught. Uh, but by coming out of the flat rate from the 1st of March, uh, they will open their box full and they'll be a refund trader and they could consider monthly returns. All right, so that's uh, the flat rate. Uh, I just want a quick look at mixed invoices because obviously when we're billing, uh, there's going to be other stuff on the invoice. Now, the HMRC has simplified this massively. If any of the services on the invoice are subject to the domestic reverse charge, then the whole invoice will be subject to the domestic reverse charge, even if there's stuff on there that wouldn't normally be as subject to these provisions. Uh, if there's one 
DRC supply on that invoice, the whole invoice is subject to the domestic reverse charge. And the customer, the main contractor, say, uh, will then have to go through the invoice line by line and apply the domestic reverse charge at the appropriate rates. So you maintain the integrity of the supply. Because what you're trying to do is put the contractor in this position as if they've been charged uh, VAT by the subcontractor. So therefore, the invoice comes in with no VAT on it, and then the main contractor, when they're entering the system, they're going, yep, that's a DRC at 20% because it was commercial work. Uh, that's a DRC at 5%, for example, uh, because it was uh, conversion work. So you maintain the integrity uh, of the domestic reverse charge in the customer's books, the main contractor normally. Now, there is an optional 5% disregard where the subcontractor can apply that to the whole invoice. I wouldn't expect to see that very often, but it is there. So, for example, if the CIS service on the invoice was, let's say, 4% of the invoice total, uh, then if you wanted to, it's optional, uh, you could charge that on the whole invoice, or you could just say, well, there's an invoice that has a CIS reportable service, so I'm going to apply the DRC to the whole lot. Um, so you've got a choice. Uh, if it's 5% Miranda, the CIS element, you could do the DRC, or you could say, I'm going to charge that in the normal way. Now, it's quite an important uh, comment and statement uh, by HMRC throughout their guidance. And what they've said is, if in doubt, always apply the DRC uh, to CIS reportable work as supplied to VAT registered businesses. It is the default. So what they're confirming is there's two key conditions. The service must be CIS reportable and it must be VAT registered to VAT registered. If you hit those, then you assume the DRC is in point and out the invoice goes with no VAT and all the narrative on there about the domestic reverse charge. Now, there are some exceptions uh, to the domestic reverse charge. So the domestic reverse charge will not apply to zero rated services. So if your business is house building, then you're used to getting all your services coming in at the zero rate, uh, built you know, carpenters, electricians, etc. Uh, then they are not within the domestic reverse charge provisions because there's no point. Uh, there's no risk of missing trade of that because they've never charged that in the past. So they stay as they are. Uh, they, they don't fall within the domestic reverse charge. Now, the domestic reverse charge does not apply to employment businesses either. Now, that's simply because they are supplying staff rather than construction services. So, for example, they might get a call from a client saying, I need four carpenters on site on Monday, can you supply them? And they'll say, yeah, we can do that. And you just make sure that four carpenters turn up on Monday morning. Now you are supplying staff, not carpentry services. So therefore employment businesses are outside of the domestic reverse charge. They will continue to charge that as they have done before. Now the big exception, and, and the one that's uh, causing a few issues in terms of understanding what it is, it's end users. Now, end users, I will explain what they are, but they are only accepted if they confirm their end user status in writing. If they don't do that, uh, then they're not regarded as an end user. Now, end users are consumers or final customers of building and construction services. They're businesses that do not make onward supplies of construction services. So, for example, developers they are end users because they don't intend to sell on construction services. They intend to sell completed properties. So developers are end users. Now the end user uh, would probably be registered for CIS uh, for direct tax purposes, probably as a mainstream uh, contractor, some of them as a deemed contractor, but they will be registered for the construction industry scheme. Uh, so here we've got uh, the conditions kicking in. They're CIS reportable. They're VAT registered, VAT registered normally, uh, and so we're thinking the domestic reverse charge applies. But developers are end users and they have the ability uh, to disapply the domestic reverse charge and essentially carry on as they were. Let's look at an example of end user status. I've got a VAT registered subby uh, doing work for a developer. That developer is going to be converting pubs into flats and selling the flats to buyers. Now, the developer decides to give end user status confirmation to the subcontractor. That means the subcontractor behaves perfectly normal. 
Um, so they charge VAT at 5%. That's the appropriate rate on qualifying conversions. They put the VAT at 5% in box one. They put the net in box six. When the developer sells on to the buyer, zero rated. When you sell flats that have come from, say, commercial, the sale is zero rated, which gives them the ability to recover VAT on the 5%. And they put the net in box seven. Now, let's see if the developer confirms end user status. Now, some developers might look at this and say, actually, I don't want to confirm status. Now, so, and they decide not to. Now, the legislation is drafted, so the subcontractor assumes the DRC is in point, unless they get reconfirmation of end user status. Uh, well, there's no obligation on the end user to issue uh, that confirmation. Uh, so if no confirmation is given, the DRC remains in point. And this is because HMRC want the DRC to apply, uh, because uh, the risk for them is subcontractors charging that. Um, so therefore, the legislation is drafted uh, to make it you know, almost across the board, the DRC applying. Uh, so DRC, in this instance, if there's no confirmation, that would be uh, what applies. And I'm thinking, well, how many end users will confirm their status? I don't think there'll be that many, uh, because the cash flow advantage of not confirming status will be significant to them. So let's look at uh, an example with no confirmation. So I've got a VAT registered subcontractor. Same situation, uh, billing a developer. But this time, the developer does not confirm end user status. They are an end user because they are selling flats to a buyer. They're not supplying on construction services. But the developer has chosen not to confirm status. Now, that means the DRC has to apply to the invoice between the subby and the main contractor. Uh, so the subby would put the net in box six. Now the developer uh, will then account for the reverse charge in box one uh, and put the net in box seven. The developer has that zero rated onward supply uh, of the flats to buyers and by making a taxable supply, the developer can then recover the VAT on the domestic reverse charge in box four. Now I think developers will not confirm status. I think they'll like the idea of the domestic reverse charge applying now, there is nothing the subbers can do about it. They can't force the developer to issue the end uh, user confirmation. If it's really important to the subbers that they charge that, and many will want to do that because of cash flow, uh, then address it in the contracts. Yeah, address it in the agreement up front. And you could use the same wording as what HMRC suggests on the confirmation, just tweak it a bit. And in the contract uh, for this, this work, uh, just have, because they're both going to sign it, uh, that the developer agrees they are an end user for the purposes of the domestic reverse charge and accept that VAT will be charged on the invoices. So address it up front. Uh, because once you're in the contract, you can't force them to issue an end user confirmation. Uh, well, that concludes uh, this uh, short run through of the domestic reverse charge. If you've got any questions, uh, do contact uh, me via the website. Uh, my name's Dean Wooten. Uh, so via the website, and I, I can help you with anything you've got. Uh, but that's the quick summary of the new rules from the 1st of March 2021.